Hi everyone, welcome to the QEOps channel. I'm Rafael Lima and today we're going to be creating the Cucumber Runner, right? So this is going to enable us to run the tests from uh, the command line and from the IntelliJ with the difference that what we have been doing so far is running the test IntelliJ that runs everything, does not generate a report, but with the Cucumber Runner, uh, the IntelliJ is also going to generate the report. The IntelliJ is going to execute exactly as you, uh, you could in the command line or you would in the command line. And that's very important, right? So if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell so you're going to receive the notifications of the next videos. And I'm also going to be posting the links for the previous videos so you can keep it up uh, with everything that you have created so far and you, you, you're going to know how we reach this this far already right so let's start here we have a uh if we go to our presentation we have this presentation here I already showed this a couple of times you have the cucumber runner which this is going to enable us to run uh through the command line right so if i go right here and i do gradle test Right now, it does not it execute the task, but it does not does not have any test executing. Right, so if I do open app build reports test index HTML, you can see that it it executed, but uh, does not have anything because it does not understand that we are using Cucumber yet. Right, so this is what the Cucumber Runner does. It's going to tell uh, that we are going to be using a uh, Cucumber to run our test. Also, what we need to do is we need to create a class in the Java package called, uh, whatever you want to call, I'm going to call Cucumber Runner class. What here? We have a class, Cucumber Runner, right? And what I'm going to say here, I need to say uh, that Cucumber is going to run, right? The, the, it's going to, this class is going to be executed with, run with the JUnit Runner, right? And this JUnit Runner, I'm going to say you're going to run the Cucumber class. Right. And I need to import this, Alt Enter. Right. Now I need to tell it the options that I want for it to run, the Cucumber options. So I pass as a parameter. The first thing is tags. So what are tags, right? So tags, I can, I can mark my scenarios or my features with tags. And that's going to allow me to execute specific things, ignore other things, uh, uh, create hooks. Everything uh, that I'm saying here, is, I'm going to explain. I'm going to show you with details. But this is the first step of doing that. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say do not execute tags called whip. Whip means work in progress. So those are tags like when you are creating a scenario, you mark that scenario as whip. To, to, to tell whatever runner you're going to use, like CLI or server, that those scenarios you are still working with or you're still working on, and they should not be executed because since you are still developing that, if those get executed, it's going to fail in your build and you do not want that, right? So, and the other one is do, and do not execute quarantine, quarantine, quarantine tags. Why quarantine? Because uh, quarantine usually I use when the, my tests are flaky and flaky are non-deterministic tests, meaning that either sometimes it fails, sometimes it, it runs. So uh, when you have that kind of test, it, it, it's, only, it's only harmful for your project because when somebody say, hey, just rerun it, and it's going to work, that's a problem because you lose confidence on your test, right? If your test fails, it should because it should be because it actually failed. And if your test passes, it should be because it actually passed. 
and not you you are you start questioning if it was actually a fail or if it was actually a success. So you are, you are going to lose confidence in your test. So as soon as you realize that one test is flaky, you mark that as quarantine because that's going to be ignored in your pipeline. But at the same time, it's going to notify, it's going to signalize, it's going to be visually easy for you to identify which test you need to work with. If you can work right away, awesome. But if you can't, then using a tag called quarantine is going to help you out. Great. So the other one is I'm going to tell what kind of report do I want. So it's a plugin, right? And I'm going to say this is going to be a pretty plugin. And I'm going to use uh, the report HTML. I can generate a JSON. I can generate a XML. And where I want that report to be located, build slash reports slash feature dot HTML. Why on build? Why not on my root folder? Right. So let me show you this. Uh, if I show you the the app folder, you have this build here. If I execute a tag called clean, you're going to see that the build is gone, right? So everything that's on build is going to be generated automatically uh, on the compilation time. So it's going to be your dot classes, uh, your jar files. So if I do not put on my build and I put the reports on my root folder, it's not going to get cleaned when I execute the tags clean. Right, and then now I'm going to have to ignore it, get ignored. I'm going to have to manually delete it. Uh, but this way, when I clean it, it's going to delete the whole build uh, folder, and that's what I want because my reports should be the report that gets executed or gets run uh, when I, I'm compiling or when I'm doing whatever that I need to do to run my test. Right. So, and when I clean it, I want that cleaned. I want to make sure that. I have a fresh report, right? So that's why I put on build. And finally, I'm going to tell well, where are my features because my features are under resources, right? So I need to tell it features and I needed to tell it where my features are located. So it's source, test, resources, features, right? So, now I can right click here and I can run. So it's going to run everything. You will see that there are some tests failing because these are the doc string that I, I commented it out, right? So the doc strings are commented it out. Uh, so if I go now to my report that we created, open build, open app, build, reports, features. So now we can see everything here. You ran the scenarios, the scenario that failed, uh, the table, everything here, right? Uh, so if I go now back here and I say, okay, let's test our tags. So I come to my user and I tag the whole whip, the whole feature whip, right? And I execute, now I'm going, I'm going to execute through the command line. And you can see that it was able to identify test. Some of them already failed. When I refresh it, you're going to see that it did not execute the user feature. You execute usuary, which is user in Portuguese, but the user.feature did not get executed because I ignored the whole file. So now I can remove here and I can put the quarantine tag in this one, the one that's failing. Quarantine. If I re-execute here, now the user is here, see? And the user passed because the quarantine one was the one that was failing, the doc string. He is failing because I did not ignore the doc string in Portuguese, right? So, and I can come, I can come here right now and do quarantine. are in time. If I re-execute everything, awesome. Well, now it's, everything's passing. Great, amazing, right? 
So uh, now I have uh, a, a Cucumber runner that's going to enable me to run both on my command line and on my IntelliJ as is in my IntelliJ, I was executing from my command line. So I don't need to execute feature by feature. I can just come here and uh, right click it and run and it's going to ignore whip quarantine because I, in IntelliJ, I do not want to execute those sometimes. I do want to execute those whenever I, I can, but I can now come here, right click it and execute this scenario specifically. But when I execute through here, it's going to ignore whatever I, I set it up. Right? So this is very important for me. All right, so thank you for watching. This is what I wanted to show you. Uh, uh, please subscribe, hit the bell, so you're going to receive the notification for my next videos. Uh, if you like it, give it a thumbs up, and I'm going to see you on my next video. Thank you.